أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد وبارك وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على السلام الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته اللهم لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده وحبيبه ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن العظيم بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور رحيم صدق الله العظيم ألا إن أحسن الكلام كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is most kind and most merciful and we send salawat to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
we bear witness that Allah is only one without any other partner and our Prophet Muhammad is the servant of Allah and the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask from Allah Jalla Shahu every day, every hour to guide us to the right path, to increase our faith every single day and to make us always connected with Him and to make us successful in this life and also in the next life. Today we will talk uh, about the humility and humbleness, how much humble Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu was. As we know, Umar bin Khattab is the person that was the second Khalifa, the second leader of the Ummah, of the nation of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu After Prophet Ali sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, he did not appoint it directly a name, a leader, but indirectly he always chose Abu Bakr Siddiq. That's why the next leader becomes Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He ruled for two and a half years. The time of the Prophet was very simple. Mostly was hardship, difficulties and poverty. And the similar was the time of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Was very simple, was poverty, hardship and challenges. But both Prophet established the foundation of the faith of Islam and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu fortified that foundation, made it stronger and stronger and continued the message and the legacy of our Prophet Ali salatu salam. Now, the third leader, the second leader as a Khalifa is Omar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu appointed directly by Abu Bakr Siddiq one week before he passed away. Abu Bakr Siddiq when he became very sick, he could feel that now is the end of my life. He called few Sahaba, the elite Sahaba companions of the Prophet, and he said that I want to appoint for um, the next person after me, one of you, and that will be Omar bin Khattab. What is your opinion? And all of them said very good words about Umar bin Khattab radiallahu One of them was Uthman and he praised Umar bin Khattab and he said that this is the best leader you have chosen for us. So you don't have to worry at all and he will continue your legacy and the Prophet sallallahu legacy. In the time, lifetime of the Prophet Ali sallallahu we see that always Abu Bakr is on the right side of the Prophet and Omar is on the left. So always the Prophet will sit where Abu Bakr in one side and Omar in one side. And this is indication that this is the next one and after him is this next one. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, when he listens to these beautiful words of Uthman about Omar, he says that if I have to uh, leave Omar, I will choose you to be the next. Meaning after Omar, it is your position and that's what happened after Omar was Uthman. So we're talking about Omar bin Khattab radiallahu As we know in the story of the Prophet Ali sallallahu alayhi Omar was totally different from Abu Bakr Siddiq. Abu Bakr was a soft person, gentle person, and very patient person. But Omar was totally different. He was strict, he was tough, and always when someone came to the Prophet Ali sallallahu and started arguing with the Prophet Ali mostly of these people are the hypocrites, and also the disbelievers who didn't believe and they come just to meet the Prophet but they argue about things, about religion. Omar bin Khattab many times, more than 20 times this happened with different places, different people, that he comes to the Prophet when he listens that Prophet is suffering, trying to convince him, trying to talk to him and he doesn't listen. So Omar gets the sword and said, leave me Ya Rasulullah, give me permission so I can finish this person who doesn't listen from you. So many times this happened. And the Prophet will tell him, Sabr, make, be patient, Omar, sit down, be patient. And the Omar will sit down and will... And so this happened many times. But now when he is the Khalifa, he is the leader of the Muslims, how many times we see that did he punish anyone with his own sword? No, zero. No anyone. So now his style has changed. Why? Because that time the leader was the, was the Prophet and Omar was leaning on the shoulder of the Prophet. Now he is the leader, responsibility is different and now when he will act something, 
he will think twice. That time he was not thinking at all. Because there is the prophet there, full responsibility. That's why, leave me prophet, I finish this job. But now he will think twice. The responsibility is different. So it is reported for Umar bin Khattab when he became Khalifa. The first khutbah that he gave after they finished the burial of Abu Bakr Siddiq, he comes in the mosque, he sits in, he stands in the member, and he says, all oh, you people, help me in this leadership. Help me and be with me in this leadership. I am one of you, and I am a weak person, servant of Allah. Help me in this leadership. And the most beloved people to me will be those of you who will catch my mistakes and will tell me my wrongdoings and point my mistakes. Those will be the people closer to me. So he's opening the door to everyone that when I do something wrong, please let me know straight away. So I want to correct myself. So in one khutbah, he was giving now another place, another time giving khutbah. One person from the jamaat, from the people, congregation, he said, Ya Omar, ittaqillah. Omar, fear Allah. And someone from the other corner of the mosque telling him, You shut up, who are you to talk like that? And Omar bin Khattab said, No, wallahi. I, Allah, will not love me if I don't take that advice. And Allah will not love you if you don't let him give me that advice. That is a good advice. I should fear Allah. So this is the humility of Omar bin Khattab. If it was us, we'll say, who are you to tell me fear Allah? You go fear Allah yourself. But Omar is humble. Another speech he is giving now, these things happen in the middle of the khutbah. Like I'm talking now and someone of you stands up. So he is saying that, oh Jamaat, oh people, I want to make the mahar, the dowry for marriage, easy for you. Become, because if the dowry, the payment that the husband gives to his wife, becomes expensive, the marriage will become difficult. So I want to set a price, maximum price, for every one of you, 14 dinar. 14, 14,000 dinar. That will be the top dowry. So more than that, to not be acceptable. And now in the mosque there is man praying and listening, but there is woman at the back. One woman stands up and says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mini, leader of the believers, who are you to set price on the dowry? Do you don't know the verse 20 in Surah Al-Nisa, the chapter number 4, Allah says, وَيْنِمْ سَبْدَلْهُمْ قِنْتَارًا فَلَا تَأْخُذُوا مِنْهُ شَيْئًا Allah says that if you, husband and wife, set a price, a treasure, a big treasure, and Allah does not say the amount, treasure is being huge, and you agree on that, then you have to pay that treasure. Allah says that. And who are you to set a limit on the matter? And Omar bin Khattab, he start hitting his head and saying, Antum afqahu min Omar. All of you, are more smart than Omar. I am so non-intelligent to not see this verse. How I am here to put the prize on man when Allah did not put And I salute that lady who corrected me in this and there is no limit in the man. So see, Omar had a good intention, but when Allah did not, he couldn't go above the limit. And his, uh, the, the style of Umar bin Khattab, he, in the time of Abu Bakr, when any money was coming to the hand of the leader, he would distribute to all the companions of the Sahara. How he would distribute? All equal. So if he's, let's say, 100, he will give one, one, one to everyone. Umar bin Khattab disagreed with this style and said, Abu Bakr, you cannot give the same amount to that Sahabi companion who entered in Islam early, and the same amount to that companion who entered in Islam later. That who, those who entered before, they sacrificed more. They've been many years sacrificing hardship. They went through more, so you need to give them more. Abu Bakr said, Allah Ta'ala says, Innakum antum ummatun wahidun. Allah says in the Quran, you are one nation. So Allah does not give us any class. 
We are all one, similar, and there is no difference class. So I cannot make separation on that. When Umar bin Khattab became Khalifa, now what happened is that Sahaba, Muslims, conquered many areas, large area, started in the time of Abu Bakr, but continued in time of Umar. So now Iraq, Iran, full, entered in the borders of Islam. Syria, all in Islam. And Muslims went up to high in Central Asia, Azerbaijan, Armenia, comes in the border of Islam. So North Africa, full, till Libya and Morocco and Al Jazeera, Egypt comes in the hands of Islam. And when they conquering, the wealth of those kingdoms before is coming in Medina. That's how much that the old wealth was brought in the masjid. And when the uh, Omar is sit, standing in khutbah, people cannot see Omar because in front is a pile of gold. That's how much. So Omar set a different price that he will give the highest he made class, he made levels, the highest money will take those who entered first in Islam and then will continue less and less and less and less. So him himself, he is number 38 or 40 who entered in Islam. So he is class number 5 in this. So he's not even the first one. And the first was Azwaj al-Mutahara, the wives of the Prophet. 15,000 dinar. This was a huge price. Every month will be given to them. And then the other Sahaba of Badr, then the Sahaba of Uhud, then the Khaybar, the Khandak, and then the Hudaybiyah. So it will have a price. Now Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar, comes and says, Father, I have a complaint. Why you gave me only 2,000 dinar for me? I entered Islam very early. I uh, participated in battle of Badr, but the Prophet sent me back home because I was very young and little. But I participated in battle of Uhud, in every battle with the Prophet. And you give me only 2,000. But Usama, which is same age of me, he did not participate in all this battle. You give him 3,000, more than me. What he has more than me, that he should take more. And Umar bin Khattab said, that, listen to me, he is the son of Zaid, and Zayd was, remember, the adopted son of the Prophet So his father is more beloved to the Prophet than your father. And him is more beloved to the Prophet than you. That's why be happy with this 2000, otherwise even this 2000 I'm not going to give you. So always indication towards the Prophet This was Omar bin Khattab. And Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu came in Baytul Muqaddas, you know the story, Jerusalem. And uh, the priests of Jerusalem were so much touched and impressed from humility, from the character of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. And the first Sahaba to welcome for, uh, Umar bin Khattab was three of them. Khalid bin Walid and Amr ibn al-As and Abu Baida ibn Jarrah. These are the first to welcome Umar bin Khattab. And now, as we know that Khalid and Amr, these are big generals, and all of this area that we mentioned has been conquered because of these two people. These were commanders, and they were, Allah made them for all these battles. They had strategies and everything, and Khalid is the Sayfullah, the sword of Allah. And now, because of conquering all these areas, so they got a lot of wealth, and a lot of cloth and a lot of uniforms of the Roman Byzantine. So they wear on themselves. They took off those cross and those uh, gold and things, but then they put on them that now look different commanders and very standard price. They are the officers of the army. From far away you can see this is a different person. So with that uniform they come to meet Omar bin Khattab. And when Omar bin Khattab saw them, he said, shame on you. In only one year, you came out of Medina. In one year, you have changed your dress. <coughs> and uh, Khalid Murid and Amr put his head down, their head down. And Abu Baida, when he met Abu Baida, he said, <coughs> Subhanallah, Almighty Allah, praise be to Allah, you have not changed from the time of the Prophet even one inch. You are still the same. So, 
Omar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, he had very simple life. He had very simple food. Sometimes his stomach will ground. Noises will come from the stomach. And in the mosque, people can hear because he's hungry. And he will say to his stomach, Qarqir awlan tu qarqir. You ground, you make noise or don't make noise. I will not give you what you ask for until I feed every person that is under my leadership. Until I know that every family have food on their houses and every baby is getting feed, then I will feed you all stomach. He's talking to his stomach. So he's very careful. And then he used to pray, Oh Allah, help me. Because if a dog will die hungry in my leadership, in my places, wherever we have conquered, a dog will die hungry, I will be questioned for that, why there is no food for that dog. This is the leadership. So Omar bin Khattab's target is to feed people, to make them happy, healthy, and wealthy, and himself empty, where now our Muslim leaders have the opposite way to make themselves uh, wealthy and they don't care about the people. So Omar bin Khattab was totally different. And the last thing is that the Sahaba, this great, great Sahaba, we're talking about elite, Abu Baida, Uthman, Ali, Abdurrahman bin Auf, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas, and Zubair, and Talha, Sa'id bin Zayd, they came together and they said that who is going to tell Omar to change his dress, to wear a little bit better dress, nice, a lot of uh, people are coming, a lot of groups are coming from different places. He should meet them with a, some style as a leader. And he has patches in his dress and a lot of very poor dress. Who is going to tell him? And to change a little bit his food. Can eat nice food. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us now. All this wealth is coming to Medina. We can provide for our leader. We all are eating nice, having dressing nice. Why not him? Ali said, who among you can go and talk to Omar like this? Tell me. He said, what you, Ali? He said, no. You want my death today to talk to Omar like this? No way. Then we should do something. How? No one dare to come to Omar to talk about this. They came in the conclusion that there is a few people that Omar can listen to them. And who will be Aisha radiallahu anha and Hafsa? Aisha is the daughter of Abu Bakr. And Hafsa is the daughter of Omar. And these both are the wives of the Prophet So they told them that please request to Omar for this. And the both wives of the Prophet come to Omar bin Khattab radiallahu anh. He saw them. He is very happy to see them. Welcome them. And Aisha first spoke. Ya Amir al muminin O leader of the believers. We have come here to give you a request and advice. And Omar said what? She said that in the time of Prophet Sallallahu Allah did not give us dunya. We didn't have wealth. Allah did not give us. It was a difficult time, hard time. We never saw gold and silver. It was hard. The time of my father Abu Bakr was hard and difficult. But now Allah has opened the door. The life has become easy. Now we have everything we can. Why we don't change your dress, your cloth? Why we don't change your food? We will cook with our own hands for you. We'll provide the food for you. We will prepare the dress for you to have a, a nice dress. You are suffering, your body is suffering. The dress you are wearing is bringing a lot of uh, problems in your skin and your food is difficult. You are becoming weaker and weaker every day. Why we don't use what Allah has given us? And Omar bin Khattab, when he heard this, he got so, so angry. And he said, Wallahi, you, someone has brought you here to me. You have, this is not your idea. Tell me the names of those people, who they are. And I will fix all of them who bring these ideas to me. And he said, you are the wives of the Prophet, 
You tell me. What type of food the Prophet Sosa ate? One day he had food for one meal a day, not three meals, one meal a day. The other day he didn't have nothing to eat and he fasted the whole day because he had nothing to eat. When we went to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, we are hungry and we have patched stone in our stomach so we can stand. The Prophet opened his garment and showed us two stones in his stomach. We had one, he had two. You remember that the clothes of the Prophet had only one pair. And sometimes used to say to Bilal, Bilal, tell the people in the mosque to wait because I just washed my garment and I'm waiting to get dry. I don't have any other to wear. And then he said, Hafsa, you remember when you put a small table in the front of Prophet said to eat food. And he said, Hafsa, no, I am the servant of Allah and I want to eat like a servant. Take off that small table and put my food on the ground. And he ate from the ground. The table, or the, the plate was put on the ground. And that's how he ate. And remember, Hafsa, that what was the bed of the Prophet And she said it was only one leather, very thin leather. And one time, Omar said, you tell us that one time you made that leather twice and you made to a little bit softer bed for the Prophet what the Prophet said in the morning Hafsa what you have done to my sleeping place today tonight I wake up late for my night prayers and she said Ya Rasulullah instead of once I just made it two for you to become a little bit soft no Hafsa return back as it was my bed should be hard strong so I can wake up for night prayers. This was the life. And remember when I came to visit Rasulullah it was very hot uh, time, hot day and I saw the Prophet is sleeping and sweating and he is sleeping in a type of carpet made from the branches of dates. And when the Prophet sit down I can see the marks in the body of the Prophet and I said Ya Rasulullah why these marks in your body why we don't make one nice soft bed for you and the Prophet said Omar they Persia and Rome because he said Persian and Rome kings have a better bed and they soft bed and why we don't make one for you and Prophet said they have chosen this life we have chosen the next life so this was Omar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. He said to Aisha and Hafsa, go back. I will not change my food, not change my cloth. Because my companions, Prophet and Abu Bakr, they lived their life simple and they passed from this life successful. If I change myself, I will never meet them in the next life. And I want to meet them and I will continue to follow their footsteps. And that's how was all the life of Omar bin Khattab radiallahu And the results of all of this what? The result is the borders of Islam spread so much that this is the golden time of the Muslims era around all the globe. The most uh, important countries and cities was conquered in the time of Omar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. This is full, successful achievement of all the legacy of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. People like this, they will never come again. But we have to remember these stories, to take some lessons for ourselves, to make ourselves better and better every day. We live in this life and we will go because we are only musafir, travelers. And Omar used to always say, Hasibu count yourself and think about yourself and judge yourself before you will be judged in the day of judgment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So look after your actions and correct yourself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the true believers and give us strong faith 
and iman and knowledge every single day. Amin. Wa qulu qawli hada. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ibu al-Muslimin. Astaghfiruhu inna wa lakum. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة للمتقين والجنة للموحدين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات والأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم اشرح صدورنا للإسلام اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكر إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان اللهم اجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم توفنا مسلمين والحكمة بالصالحين غير خزايا ولا مدونين وصلى الله على النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين آمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاع ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي العظيم يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وجل وتم وهم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقيموا الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر إن شاء الله make the line straight we just announced that the next جمعة we will do collection إن شاء الله for the same we dealt down last week but better today we announce and the next جمعة we do collection again we have collected about four hundred dollars the Madrasa in Macedonia needs a little bit more support, inshallah. So next week we will do again collection for that madrasa for the uh, kids who are uh, studying and learning the Quran, inshallah, in Tetovo. And after the fard prayer, we have other, our brother Jason here who is going to do the shahada to uh, convert to our religion of Islam, inshallah. So after the salam, we do his shahada, inshallah. Yeah. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله خيال السلاة خيال السلاة خيال الفلاح خيال الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله واستووا واعتدلوا سووا صفوفكم رحمني ورحمك الله في الله في الله اسمك الله يستر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والدين والزيتون وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين 
you are part of 1.7 billion. Big family. Big family. Big family. Big family.
على رسولنا صلوات سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا اله الا الله والله اكبر ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم يا رب ذا الجلال سبحان الله سبحان الباقي دائما الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين تعالى جل شنوه الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين حبيبي الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا لا تزيق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إيمانا رب اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين وصلى الله على النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الفاتحة Thank you.